Squish it down. Oh, I just broke it! <laughs> you broke it? Yes! No more tortillas for us! Dude. <laughs> Did we get one? We'll see. Welcome to my kitchen. It's finally football season again, and at our house, that means game food. And our favorite game food is taco bar. So today I'm making tortillas. Let's get started. So along with gluten and dairy, I'm also sensitive to corn. I'm not allergic to corn, I'm just sensitive to corn, which means I can handle a little, like the amount of cornstarch that is in, for instance, baking powder, or the amount uh, that might be in corn syrup and ketchup. But I cannot eat a corn tortilla and tortilla chips are off the table. So usually when we do tacos, I have a taco salad with none of those things. I needed to figure out how to make tortillas that tasted good, not only for tacos, but also for wraps for breakfast or for lunches. And this is the version I've come up with. I'm not positive it's the best ever, but it sure is better than anything I've eaten from the store. Here we go. We're starting with my basic flour blend. And if you haven't had a chance to watch that episode, it is available here on YouTube as well. I need one and a third cups of my basic flour blend. As always, the recipe will be in the description of the video. Along with my basic flour blend, I'm going to add some cassava flour. Now I haven't used cassava yet um, in any of my other episodes. Cassava is a root that um, is ground up and dried. It's also used to make tapioca starch, but there's a different process there. So it's a great gluten-free um, flour, it's grain-free, it's nut-free, um, and it's kind of a, a, one of those higher carbohydrate uh, flours. It's, um, what do you call it, a tuber, similar to a potato. <laughs> it's not a tuber. <laughs> it is a tuber. Kindergarten cop, yes, I got it. <laughs> so I'm using a cup of cassava flour. Some people say it's a one-to-one -one exchange for um, wheat flour, and I would tend to not agree with that. Um, but it is a good addition to our arsenal of options for making um, gluten-less treats. <laughs> so with my flowers, cassava, and my flour blend, I'm going to add some xanthan. Xanthan, again, is the um, replacement for the gluten in the flour. It's what holds everything together. And I need two teaspoons of xanthan. And then some baking powder. I'm gonna go one teaspoon of baking powder. And this time I am going to add salt. If you've watched many of my videos, a lot of times I leave out the salt because we try to be low sodium in our household. However, tortillas have almost no flavor at all in them. So without the salt, there really is nothing there. Um, I don't use a lot, just a half a teaspoon is all I need. It doesn't need much. It doesn't need much. The tortilla is the vehicle for that. Right, you're hopefully it's making- It's the road that the taco drives up. <laughs> Hopefully all of the things you're putting on your tortilla is where you're getting your flavor from. Um, and you don't really need that much salt. But I would recommend putting a little in. <laughs> Great. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to use my um, pastry blender here in a minute, so I'm just going to use that to mix all of my dry ingredients together. It's wide already something extra. All right. 
And then I'm going to cut in two tablespoons of, whoa, <laughs> they fall over. I haven't even gotten to the margaritas yet. <laughs> uh, two tablespoons of shortening. If you are um, no soy, shortening does contain soy. I don't know why you couldn't use coconut oil in this instance because it is solid at room temperature, so that should um, also work. I have not tried it, but I think it would work fine. And I'm just going to cut that in. Okay. And then my wet ingredients. So I'm going to start with three fourths of a cup of warm water. To my three fourths of a cup of warm water, I'm adding one teaspoon of, I'm using white balsamic vinegar, apple cider vinegar works as well. So this is white balsamic that's really mild in flavor, not the, the dark brown, yummy, um, rich balsamic. This is a white balsamic that's very light. And then I'm also putting in half a teaspoon of honey. Now I'm ready to mix it in. So once all of my ingredients are incorporated, I uh, went ahead and kneaded it together to get all of those pieces in there. I'm going to divide this into um, eight balls. So divide it in half, and then each of those into fourths. All right, so my tortilla press is a press and cooker at the same time. So I just use two pieces of parchment paper, put one ball of tortilla on my parchment paper, other side, into my tortilla press, Let's close the lid, squish it down. Oh, I just broke it! Okay. Yes. No more tortillas for us. Dude. <laughs> Did we get one? We'll see. I broke it. Okay, well, let's unplug that. <laughs> now I guess I have to do it the old fashioned way by hand and be more careful. <laughs> I am saving my layers of parchment paper because um, I'm going to put these in the freezer. So I will leave the, the parchment paper between the tortillas and I put them in the freezer. So it'll be really quick and easy to just pull out one or two at a time. Okay, my taco's all ready for me to take a bite. Just a word of caution. The last time I glutened myself, it was salsa. I didn't read the label. I know better, I did not read the label. So even if it's fresh salsa, double check the label. All right, let's see how my tortilla holds up to my taco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It held in all the, I mean, goodness. 
<laughs> Thanks for watching. Go Hawks. Goodbye.